Well, 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 the fantasy playoffs uh, apparently started. Now, not everybody got the memo this week, so we reflect on the studs and so many duds on today's show. We're feeling the pain with you, and, and, and the truth is maybe your opponent felt it as well, and you're in it with these Monday night, Tuesday night games. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy today's episode if you can. As fall transitions to winter, there's nothing better than cozying up with a comforting home-cooked meal, especially when HelloFresh makes it so easy. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. We also want to thank Truebill for supporting the show. How many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars over the years because you forgot to cancel? You can fight back against those scammy subscriptions with Truebill. When Truebill partnered with us on the show, Mike had been a, right. a Truebill customer for years. Love and, Truebill. And it's not a tough sell because you sign up and the average person saves $720 a year and it helps you stop paying for subscriptions you don't need and identify those things that are recurring bills on your on your bank account. And so uh, then you don't even have to go and like cancel them with those companies because Truebill has that feature built in as well. They've helped over 2 million people save uh a hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash footballers. Go right now, truebill.com slash footballers. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore. And Mike Wright. Oh, welcome, man. Watch out. Falling anvils or what? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> everything is everything. Week 15. It's a hell of a drug. Dangerous in the streets, man. <laughs> it is Monday, December 20th. Football every night. So we got it tonight. We got it tomorrow. Had it on Sunday. Had it on Saturday. Had it on Thursday. Friday. You got Friday off from pain. <laughs> you thought you were done? You're done when I say you're done. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even <laughs> imagine if I'm, I'm, if I'm honest. I have... I have to go through this for two more nights. Yes, you do. And this is an opt-in, right? This is, people um, choose yeah. to do. Not you're this not. It's our hobby. We not, enjoy this. <laughs> it's our job. It's our obligation. Um, welcome into the show. I do want today to be somehow, in some way, productive for you, but I haven't figured out how yet. Because other than the catharsis, the the camaraderie of of misery. Like first, congrats to the buy those that have the buy. Yes. yes, you did not miss. I mean, you you missed out on a good uh, a, a good time this weekend, where you saw season worst performances from Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, Alvin Kamara, Amari Cooper, Corderell Patterson. They all saved it up mm -hmm. for the fantasy playoffs and. What's crazy about this is usually whenever there's bad weeks in fantasy, you flush it down the toilet, get rid of it. It's a big turd's gonna take a long flush. Um, there, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the crazy thing about this week is be because there are three more games left. Nobody has really won their matchup. You know, it, there's there's just too many players left, and since so many players sucked, even if you're in it. Like Mike, our, our yep. team, we're we're still in it. We have a chance to win. Andy, uh, you you've got two leagues where you're kind of projected to win, and you're projected for fifty fifty. But you feel like you lost <laughs> in both of them already. We feel like, like everyone usually whenever there's a bad week, half the people out there are happy because the luck happened to be on their side. But everyone feels like they lost. But it's not true. It's not true. We we're gonna have plenty of winners here. Well, you get, uh, what, Minnesota-Chicago tonight and then two games tomorrow, um, the Seattle-Los Angeles game and the Eagles-Washington game. And we got Raiders-Browns later today, too. Oh, my gosh. You oh, do. yeah. You do. So you have four. Yeah, you have four left. 
And you're right. I mean, I in our dynasty league where I am trying to defend a title, I'm going to score the least. When, when it's all said and done tonight, it's going to be the least amount of points scored, I think, maybe ever. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's not no, a joke. No, the, both teams are projected. Uh. They're projected to end with 80 points. The and, playoff and good, teams. And a, the playoff teams with 80. <laughs> the, Mike posted a stat this morning. It, it's the fewest touchdowns scored on a weekend in 25 years, 26 yeah, years. It, yes, a Sunday with 10 games played. It's, uh, there was 40 so, touchdowns. So there's a lot of reactions. Uh, I We put out the call once again to react to the weekend on Monday, Punday. I went through them all. I had to dig deep to find one of the positive ones. So we're going to begin there as we react with you, Foot Clan, to a sophisticated weekend of football. Mm, yes. <laughs> Let's begin with Amon Hurrah, St. Brown. <laughs> Yay, Brill Davis. And Brand Win Cooks. And uh, lots of ways you could go here, but let's go with Mark Hamdrews. Ham. Uh, enough with the niceties. Yes, let's get to the what real. What about Michael Farter? <laughs> <laughs> or I'll, I'll take this one, guys. Uh, <clears throat> Come on, Dre Stevenson. Come, come on, Dre. Clyde Edwards, beware. Carson Bench. Corderell <laughs> Pooterson. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, what? Waste Edmonds? Oh, that's <laughs> Jerry Duty? Are these all poop? Uh, Duke Prescott. Yes, uh, Michael Pitts. Dance. <laughs> and Wyler Murray. Oh. And there are so many more. Um, oh. I did. I did think about going entirely bathroom puns. I, I did. Right. Because there were plenty of them. And we felt them all. <laughs> but um, here we are. We got studs and duds on today's show. And uh, we have news to talk about. And we we haven't had a Monday show where there are still four games to play. That's true. And it, for how, no matter how tilted you are, Andy, just, just, <laughs> I, just remember this. It can't get farther. I am not tilted today. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Because the way you feel, I felt that way 14 times in a row, my friend. <laughs> Fourteen. So enjoy I, I, your sadness. <laughs> enjoy it. We were we were like, in the, the the Hulk. He's he's always angry. I'm always tilted. So I feel nothing today. You feel nothing. <laughs> I we we were in the uh, we use Slack for the leagues that we're in the big leagues and you know people are talking about these matchups and all Mike does his only chime in of the weekend was I hope everybody loses goodbye. <laughs> it was just it was the fourteen weeks of pain. Um, I posted a graphic this morning. Travis Kelsey outscored Brady, Evans, Mixon, Patterson, Chase, Higgins, Deontay Johnson, Kamara, Cooper, Julio Jones, and Jerry Judy combined. Mm. So that's a good time. Uh, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. If, if the games themselves weren't enough to get you on tilt, uh, you have injuries to add to them. Chris Godwin. Didn't help you last night, and he's not going to help you the rest of the year. MCL sprain, going to miss the rest of the season. Oy. Mike Evans, hamstring injury. Oy. We've been here before. Maybe he'll play. I doubt it. I, I doubt it as well. And Leonard Fournette had oh. a hamstring injury as well. And once he got to the locker room, was quickly ruled out. So I would expect, and, and it, it's too early to know, but just based on what happens with most players and – the position that this team is in, they are looking to win a Super Bowl. They want to be healthy for the playoffs. I would imagine you're without Godwin, Evans, and Fournette, at least this coming week. That that seems probable to me. And um, welcome back, Antonio Brown. Yeah, they have uh, come out and said they will welcome back Antonio Brown despite the, uh, the fake COVID-19 vaccination card. I mean, what does is, what is this do for – Tom Brady. Let's say you made it. You've got Tom Brady. You were on the bye week, or somehow you're going to make it through this week. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do next week? Because, yes, he is the greatest player of all time. I totally understand that. But you got to see what the greatest player of all time does when he doesn't have elite wide receivers surrounding him, and that can be you put up zero total points. Carolina? Next week, then the Jets for championship weekend. So maybe next week you learn 
if you can. Oh, man. And then the week after. Oh, that's going to be. You put them in there. I mean, Carolina this week, one of my just innumerable mistakes, I played Brady over Josh Allen. Right. And Allen put up a decent week against Carolina. So, you know, Tom Brady is going to come back with fire in his eyes next week. And you may not have a better choice. But can those wide receivers actually catch the fire is the question. I, uh, I, I think they can I get it done. I certainly don't think they will be as good as Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, but they're also not going to be put into uh, a position that they were not expecting, not game planned for. You know, this was uh, – they, they came in as as backups, not part of this game plan. You know, I'm I'm a special teamer, and now it's like I'm a full-time wide receiver. Joe Mixon exited with the left ankle injury. We'll monitor that. Jason, you mentioned he came back in for the kneel down. Teddy Bridgewater, scary scene again. Exited with a concussion. They say he will be okay, but what you know whether he's back out there soon, I don't know. Pat Fryermuth, concussion ruled out. Yeah. Julio Jones, the season that never was, exited with a hamstring injury. So those hamstrings don't work anymore. Like they, they really don't. They, the, I feel like his career is over. Yeah, we can't. You mentioned it. We came into the season looking at him and AJ Green came, coming out in the same class, and uh, man, it was a quick fall off for Julio Jones and the second round pick that Atlanta got for him. Congrats. That's what they got. Yeah. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Could be a career ender for Sterling Shepard as well. Torn Achilles. Season's oh. over. He's going to have to try to recover from that, and that's going to be difficult. Ankle injury for Rondale Moore, not that people were playing him. And then Lamar Jackson did not play. It's a bone bruise. And Tyler Huntley came up big. He was a stud. Yeah, he looked good. He did. And he ran for, what, 70-something yards. So, um, so He my- is the perfect backup for Lamar Jackson because a lot of times out there he – plays like Lamar Jackson you you see the 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 same reads the same tuck and runs and I believe he put up a a fantasy point level that Lamar Jackson has only hit twice what he was the number one yeah on the week was two passing touchdowns two rushing touchdowns and 73 rushing yards it's nice when you don't have to take any of the playbook away when your backup comes in yes Mm -hmm. Uh, updates for Monday night's game Right now, Landry and Hooper are both listed as questionable. They're on the reserve list. David Njoku is active from that list. We do know that Baker and Case Keenum did not test out, even with the updated protocols, so it will be Nick Mullins tonight. Yeah, I mean, I imagine, based on the change to the NFL's protocols, and if you don't know what we're talking about, they essentially came out, and for you know, without getting into the, the nitty-gritty, I don't think we're going to get affected like we did this past week. Yep. Because unless you're symptomatic and unvaccinated, you're probably not getting tested by the NFL anymore. So um, next weekend, for better or for worse, they, they you know you're going to be in better shape probably for for fantasy. Adam Thielen, Allen Robinson are both listed as questionable for the Vikings Bears game. You have expectations for Thielen being back out there? No, I. I, I it was shocking to me when I heard he was actually questionable and not doubtful. Yeah, the only thing it did for me is kind of tie break some KJ Osborne starts where I was l- less excited about starting KJ Osborne in case Thielen plays, but you couldn't have relied on playing Thielen, especially on a Monday night game. And then the Tuesday night football dot com games, you have the biggest question mark on Twitter, which is what do you do with Tyler Lockett? Is he going to somehow? test into this game and be okay. Uh, I, I thought I read a report that he was completely asymptomatic. So based on that report, there's an opportunity for him to get back, but we have literally a no idea whether that's right. going to happen. Yes, I am not familiar with Tyler Lockett's antibodies. Um, Freddie Swain is the like same team pivot that I would put on your roster. I, I did yeah. that with DK when the – when he was far more questionable due to injury earlier this week. You have to have same game or same night pivots for these players. So uh, it's just what you got to do in at a time like this. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre Carter, maybe like that. that sure. There's just not many options because you're to Tuesday already. Daryl Henderson and Odell Beckham are both active from the reserve COVID list, and they expect both to be out there. Yeah, we get to find out. 
what does the running game look like with Sony and Henderson there? And then Tyler Higby questionable. Is he back on the reserve COVID list, but this time for real? Yeah, it was. So he had the false positive, uh, missed the game, and then got a positive test. Could so. that have been a false, false positive? It, I believe it was a positive, positive. Ah. Uh, and then Washington. Well, this is this is a nightmare. Ricky Seals-Jones, if you were counting on him, did not participate in Sunday's practice due to an illness. So now his status is what? uncertain. Wow. So he was a very uh, strong tight end option this week. And uh, what's the backup? Bates, right? Yeah. John, I mean, John Bates? It Gerald Everett could be on your waiver wire. That's where I'd be looking. Gerald Everett, not, not Bates, but... Desperate times, my friends. <laughs> yes. Could be Tyler Higby out there, too, if, Could he's, be. if he's active. We have uh, Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen. What's their situation? Uh, as we heard, they are questionable. So. Ah. <laughs> Look, everybody's questionable. Everyone has questions, and we do not have any answers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone... <laughs> Is relying on Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen, so Thank they, you. you know that's actually the bright side. We're, or Tom so, Brady, good. That's yeah, good. I mean Jalen Hurts, people might be relying on questionable. But it, he's questionable. <laughs> uh, but Terry McLaurin, you, you could pick up Gardner <laughs> Minshew. Questionable. <laughs> you could pick up Minshew if you've got Hurts, and Hurts did log full practices towards the end of the week, so I, I expect Hurts to play. That's good. <laughs> Oh, man. Bring back probable. <laughs> Bring it back. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news. That wasn't news. That was just questionable news. <laughs> Sad news. <laughs> just... Questions brought to you by Sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. This is this week's questions <laughs> with no answers. This, swing, this week's mystery. What uh, a week. This week is just insane. Games moving around. Half the players missing. Oh, what just... a massacre. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Fuglin, this is not this the is norm. Not normal. This is not the norm. No. Apparently, there were studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, we, we talked about Tyler Huntley. Nobody played him, but he was great. And this could be something that goes under the radar of other teams looking at potential starter options in the future. I will say that. So maybe that makes him a dynasty stash. Sure. Uh, Patrick Mahomes did have a humongous game against the Chargers with Travis Kelsey. And so Aaron Rodgers keeps airing it out. And um, last four games, quarterback two, two, three, three. You know, if Brady ends with a, a dud. Mm. And Rodgers keeps winning, and they get that number one seed, which I think now they're in prime position for. Yes, they are. He will be an MVP candidate. Back I to think back MVPs. I think he's the favorite right now. Cam Newton, I I find it appalling that this would be considered a stud. <laughs> well, is this, is this compared to the rest of the players? Yes, it is. 18 for 38? Yeah, I think terrible. For 156 yards, he is painful to watch throw the football. It is painful to me. I don't know that there's another offense I enjoy watching less than Carolina right now. I mean, it, like the Jets are not good, but I enjoy watching. Do you more than not? Not I. I I stopped the sentence halfway, but more than the Panthers. Cam Newton helped no one. He was started in like four percent of leagues. Josh Allen ended up overcoming. They threw a last second touchdown on a play where they they should have just ran the ball and ended the game, which was delightful. For fantasy players, oh, for uh, to Gabe, yeah, to Gabe Davis, and uh, but has, they have to go to New England this week. So yeah, that's all the studs. I mean, all the studs that you, that were played. <laughs> so I, let me, let me just get this straight. No way, wait, you Hold must on. highlight this. So this uh, this this dynasty team I got because just just live live with me. All right, this dynasty team I got that is uh, on the cusp of maybe winning a game. You know, we'll see. My choices are Allen in New England or Tom Brady with no one left. That is correct. Good, good. Mm. I plan to make the wrong choice how's, there. How's that yacht now? You're out in the ocean. You got no gas. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo might get the start from my team. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, King Goffrey, no one played him, but he had a great game dismantling the Cardinals. This was, I heard from all the Lions fans that do exist, <laughs> mm -hmm. everyone that is out there still. All 25 of them. This was the biggest day of their life. Congratulations. Guys. And frankly, congratulate. I love Dan Campbell. And... The Cardinals suck, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, the, the Lions 
I mean, we do. We suck. You uh, want to talk about a team that is fun to watch? Like, all year while they're losing, the Lions are out there playing hard, doing their best. They just don't have a lot of talent. They will make... You! Thank you, King Goffrey. You're the future of that franchise. Um, he played great. He did. He played great. Uh, the Cardinals were awful, and they will make a. They'll make a, one of those kids movies. I'm sure Kevin James will be in it. They'll make one of those mm. kids movies someday about that little team that could. Maybe that'll be the name of it. I mean, the Lions are playing the best that they can play with who they have. That's the that's the facts. I mean, they really are. They're playing. That's a, a credit to Dan Campbell. Yeah. But they're. I mean. No Jamal Williams, no DeAndre Swift, uh, you know, just de- uh, unnecessary, unnecessary. We got this guy named Craig. We found him. Did he lead the on Craig's list? The last I had seen, he was leading the week in total yards rushing. It's very possible. <sighs> uh, but congratulations on losing the number one pick. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is also that's it's why it's such a weird thing of you're like, no, we want you to compete. Go out there and try to compete, uh, you just – you don't have the number one anymore now. You're number three. Uh, you have – you you had a much better situation for your team had you just lost. But also go out there and win. Yeah. I believe they're two. Yes. Uh, but I'm nope. S- no? No. No, no. They're, the they're three. Aren't? Yes. Jags, the, the Jags are uh, number one. Texans are two. Lions are three. Houston could have had the number one pick, but they they were they, went they out did something stupid like win a football game. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, everybody saw this coming, right? Uh, Duke Johnson, twenty two for one hundred seven and two. What we did see coming was the Miami running back having an excellent game against the New York Jets. That was very predictable. Uh, this is I can't remember the the player that it, it just recently happened, but. They came off the COVID list, and it was like, oh, they're back. Thank goodness. They are back. And it, once again, they weren't really involved. Like This has now happened multiple times where the late activation off the COVID list has seeded work to someone who you thought would not see the field. Is there something ironic about the player named Duke having the biggest week of the year? The Duke the of Earl? On just just in light of, uh, the, yeah, okay, of the Monday okay. pun day, I I do love that the number one quarterback is Tyler Huntley and the number one running back is Duke Johnson. That's true. Those are facts. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to week fifteen, <laughs> Brooks. How are you doing today? Excellent. Yeah. Did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Yeah. How had your fantasy teams do? I had I was uh, fortunate to have a bye week in mm. the dynasty, no. and I'm in a close one in, in my home league. Congratulations okay. on the bye week! That it's good is, to get you back. We missed you. Uh, it's good to be back. That was nice. Before we get to the rest of the running back studs, want to thank today's sponsors. And uh, look, this holiday season, the best deal on wireless. It can only be found at Mint Mobile. Mint to uh, be. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Mint <laughs> to be. Uh, Mint Mobile. We we all have Mint Mobile. Um, this is even before this deal. Uh, I already had been using Mint Mobile because they're extremely affordable. But right now, you can buy a three-month plan and you get another three months for free. That is premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. And you're going to get a basically six months for three months. It's a BOGO. Uh, by- oh, who who doesn't love a BOGO? Yeah, and they've gone online only. There's no stores. They've eliminated the traditional cost of retail. Mint Mobile passes on the savings to you. All the plans come with unlimited text, unlimited talk, unlimited high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone uh, with any Mint Mobile plan and keep the same phone number along with switching all your contacts. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash footballers. That's mintmobile.com slash footballers. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash footballers. And fellas, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Manscaped, the best men's grooming products out there. They are the global leader, and they're leaving 2021 with a new product. Clean yourself into the new year with their Ultra Premium Body Wash, which I have experienced. It's I, in a metal container. It, it, is, it, is, it, it is a very heavy-duty, serious container, and it's a serious wash. 
It's man wash. It's a seriously good fragrance. I love my new Manscaped body wash. And they have the best grooming products out there. Whatever your grooming needs are, Manscaped has you covered. You got some body hair that you'd like to remove. That's handled. You got some trimmers. That's handled. You got the nose hairs. You got the ear hair. That is absolutely handled. And you can use the code FOOTBALLERS20 and you're going to get 20% off plus free shipping. We love Manscaped. They've been a sponsor of, of this podcast for years, a sponsor of My Grooming Habits for equally as long. And right now, get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use that code FOOTBALLERS20. I have a number of running backs to talk about that people both relied on and delivered. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Jeff Wilson, 21 for 110 and 1, a couple of uh, receptions as well, and the game script, it turned very positive for Jeff. And what, look, I watched this game very closely, and what I like to see as well is Jeff had some third downs in this game. The, the last week we were out there, it was always used check or Jamichael Hasty. I don't know if the Hasty fumble on the opening drive took, took some of those opportunities away, but Jeff was on the field, had 23 opportunities. This was a delight because a lot of you held him all year long and you had the opportunity to get him into your lineup. Yeah, and, and the, the game script was perfect for him. Um, against Atlanta, having a lead uh, worked out well. This coming week, they're going to be in Tennessee, a, a more difficult matchup, but certainly Tennessee is not a team right now that is flying high on a bunch of high-scoring victories. Um, so I could see San Francisco being in a – in another positive game script and going forward, Jeff Wilson, I mean, we, obviously Elijah Mitchell, if he comes back, he would be in my lineup, but while he's out, Jeff Wilson, you, this is his ceiling. I do not think Elijah Mitchell will return this year. Hmm. Um, I, I was listening to Kyle Shanahan talk about him and he expressed concern, which I don't know, coaches, when they do that, you kind of pay attention because right. it's always the opposite. Uh, that is not a, a guarantee. I just uh, listening to him talk made me think that they haven't seen what they wanted from the knee stability wise to get him back out there. So we'll, but we'll find out. It's nice that Jeff is is viable. Saturday night, Jonathan Taylor, twenty nine for one seventy and one, and the run that. The one, they, honestly, it's the run that's saved the week. It would have been Jonathan Taylor. his worst fantasy performance. Yeah, in uh, eleven weeks, and it was like. Wouldn't have been a bad NFL But it week. wasn't. Jonathan Taylor was still absolutely dominating the New England Patriots, but it was a... He hadn't scored. It was a skin-of-the-teeth fantasy uh, save there with the yeah, huge well, run at the end. No targets, no receptions. Uh, he had about 100 yards on the ground, so that's 10 points. That's what he would have scored, 10 points, and like you said, that would have been his worst since, I think, week three. The final run... But he of, said nay. The final run of the game was MVP stuff. And it doubled his fantasy points. That's Six, what it did. I mean, sixty-seven he, yard touchdown run. In our league, he went from thirteen point something that I thought I'm facing him. I'm like, all right, I just survived Jonathan Taylor, and I did not survive Jonathan <laughs> Taylor. He smashed me. Mm -hmm. James Robinson oh, de delivered. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also gets the Jets next week. 18 for 75 and 1. He is a complete oh, smash play next week. Enjoy that. Maybe if, I won't use that expression anymore. Yeah. He is a... I would consider playing James Robinson next week. He is a high probability play of success. Austin Eckler, 12 for 59 and a touchdown despite the... Uh, we talked about this one, but despite yep. half the snaps and then an interesting development at, at the end of the year here where Devin Singletary had 22 carries for 86 and one and maybe more importantly the team came out afterwards and said we trust him as our one he so uh, he's their best running back he 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 always has been I I mean I've been a long time uh, unbeliever of Zach Moss's skill and Matt Breida is you know a journeyman special teams type of player so it was nice to see them utilize a running back and show the confidence. This is a player that might be, I, I doubt they're available to pick up, but certainly um, could help people win championships if they stick to this. Now, this coming week is New England. That's going to be one that I'm still going to sit him, but it, but what I'm going to watch for in that game is, does he have the same utilization? And if he does, you've got Atlanta and the Jets to finish out uh, the next three weeks, and that would be very nice. It's it was very bizarre to have like 
in in terms of fantasy, this was might as well be twenty five years ago. But Devin Singletary's rookie year in twenty nineteen. He was very good. I loved him. Like he loved looked, him. He doesn't have that. It, it, maybe the problem is the top end speed. Like Devin Singletary, just he doesn't have that gear that Matt Burita has. But he has tackle breaking ability. He has great balance. Like he and he's is a, he's undersized. He too. is a very yes he is. But he, but he's a very well rounded running back, and had a great rookie year. And it just it was very strange for them to make that investment on. Zach Moss so highly. Now, they believed in Moss. I, I understand that. But it seemed like they had found a gem in Singletary, and maybe they just, like, they, they found the gem, they dusted it off. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I, we totally forgot this guy is very good if you give him a bunch of carries. Two other mentions here. Uh, I believe the second highest rushing total of the week, De uh, Deonta Foreman against Pittsburgh, 22 for 108 on 39% of the snaps. It was nice to see him deliver. No touchdown, but uh, he certainly, on the week like this, was a, a benefit to your team. And Zeke. Zeke was 16 for 52 and 1. Got into the end zone. The offense has kind of struggled. And they also, you know, if you watch this game, there were a lot of, like, third and seven runs by the Dallas mm -hmm. Cowboys. And they settled for field goals. And they, they knew that they were not going to be scored on by Mike Glennon and Jake Fromm. And so they just... I thought it was a very conservative it game. It was so conservative. Um, it's upsetting because I get it. Like I'm not. If I was the head coach, I might do some of the same stuff. If you know the, I mean, their defense dominated them. You know, New York only got six points, two field goals. Um, they couldn't possibly do anything. So it's like we don't need much on. Yeah, offense. don't make mistakes. Don't on make offense. mistakes. Yeah. Let's kick field goals, punt, uh, just win the field position battle and easily walk away here with a W. But it was unfortunate for all the receiving options and Dak. And Craig Reynolds, Atlanta next week, you know, Jamal Williams could be back out there. DeAndre Swift could be back out there, but at least for one week, 26 for 112. And if he's the only guy in the backfield next week, he is viable. Wide receivers, Tyreek Hill, Brandon Cooks, Gabe Davis. Christian Kirk ended up with a late game touchdown. I'm on Ross St. Brown delivered, which was uh, – 11 targets, 8 for 90, and a touchdown. Yeah, and he gets – he's part of that Lions team that gets the Falcons next week, so he will be – He, I mean, it could uh, – so Hawkinson's out, right? He's IR. Correct. Yeah, so he won't be back. And if DeAndre Swift is out again, I mean, this is just – that's a bunch of targets that have to go somewhere, and St. Brown looks his, like their top guy right now. target market share is unbelievable. It's outstanding. 12 targets, 12 targets, 11 targets. I think he is – safe and he's he looks good and the matchup's great brandon cooks and russell gage starts of the week gage was eight for 91 and one cooks had two touchdowns with davis mills Stupid. also known as a player and quarterback i think they should stick with in yeah houston yeah he looks fine uh but that will be very difficult if they're sitting at number two and have that choice yeah it's just hard um, yeah I, I think i disagree with myself immediately if you have the chance to go and get a true but he franchise guy like Davis Mills looks like he can hang in the NFL and but I he does not strike me as uh, you know you saw rookie year Dak or rookie year uh, Russell Wilson where they they really they kind of came from mid later round picks but then you saw on the field like they were they were really good and they had more weapons yeah, they say Rex Burkhead and Chris Conley were, aren't exactly <laughs> the assortment certainly for for I think Davis Mills is a legit NFL quarterback yeah, we'll I think see. he's an uh, you know a, a legit average NFL quarterback. But if you have the chance to get someone you believe is a true franchise, you know, top ten quarterback in the NFL, don't you have to take it? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. For the off season, this is the the most difficult thing for GMs to navigate because most great quarterbacks end up being first round picks, not second round or beyond. Devontae Parker ended up four for sixty eight and one. MVS had a nice game. He looked good. Five for 98 and a touchdown. Debo still got it together. Four for 60 and then six for 29 and another touchdown on the ground. He's the wide receiver two on the year and has been very reliable. Yeah, he's fantastic. Kelsey and Andrews were dominant. Andrews, uh, 10 for 136 and two. Or maybe, maybe folks don't even want Lamar to come back the way Andrews has played with Tyler Huntley. 
Um, yeah, and, and and the way that Lamar has been playing recently, he took back the title of the tight end one on the season. The Kelsey Andrews. Oh man, guys, guys, fight! <laughs> Just keep doing <laughs> what you're doing because one of you, I I think the other one's gonna get it. I really do. This, you better st step it up, or you're gonna be number two. <laughs> Hunter Henry, two touchdowns, six for 77. Uh, Dalton Schultz, eight for 67 oh, and a touchdown. The, the doctor was the back. The doctor. He finally showed up on a Sunday. And George Kittle, six for 93. It was a ho-hum, really good game. When, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, he, he's so good. I mean, you see him break a tackle and sprint down the sideline, and you go, oh, yeah, he's different than, the, than most of these tight ends. Pooped in his big boy pants. And these were the biggest pants of all. Everyone else. Everyone we did not name. In the <laughs> if you didn't hear your name. <laughs> all other players. Oh, 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 man. How you doing, Al? I'm great. Yeah, you having a good weekend? It was great. Thank you. You had the buy two, didn't you? I did, sure did. Did you mention Zach Ertz and the studs? No. Oh, okay. I mean, he he was fine. Six, no, I know. But six the, for seventy four. Yeah, better than Pitts. Was he? Yeah. By how much? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> but Pitts was four for seventy seven. More yards, fewer receptions, uh, but in half PPR, I win. <laughs> oh, because they had the same amount of touchdowns. I thought the, you won the bet. Yeah. Wait, was the bet Ertz? He bet. Yes. Wait, was yes. it? Yeah. It was, I I thought it was the doctor. No, it, it was, was Ertz. Zach Ertz. Yeah. Well, let's we'll, we'll verify this. Can I get a? We have it written it down. It was Pitts versus Ertz. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. And um, they were, do you have the actual fantasy point difference? Um, I don't. But I think I it was like under it. a point. Uh, you win. Congratulations. Thank you. That's all I needed to bring up. Continue with the duds. I can't wait for Jimmy Graham to score again tonight. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> why, why didn't we make this bet $100? <laughs> well, this is why they moved both. I mean, these games are Monday night, Tuesday night. Disley is uh, tomorrow, and, and Jimmy Graham is tonight, and that's something to root for. Tom Brady, Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Taysom Hill. Yeah, farts. <laughs> I mean, our team, Mike and I, were were in the playoffs on a team we we co manage, and we had Travis Kelsey, which is usually a W, but unfortunately we had Kyler Murray, which was usually an L. So we TBD. We're supposed to insert our Cardinal fan thoughts here about Kyler Murray. Uh, I believe I will go with. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the rushing was weird. Um, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> you got to end on a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that game was so bad. Yeah. Jason was talking. He was saying something about the rushing. The, the rushing. I mean, it, 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 it didn't make sense watching the not. game. It did not. Um, he had so many opportunities to run. The, the previous two games... 59 yards on the ground, 61 yards on the ground, and I'm watching this game, and he could have ran all over him. He had a total of three rushing yards and was terrible, just a complete fart. But here's what's incredible, and I know there's some games to go, but right now he is the quarterback 12. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And he was one – uh, eight, quor eight quarterbacks left. One Wesselton foot away from a – a fine game. Yeah. Well, you, you, it was, it was expectation. You're yep. playing Detroit. Yes. You, you haven't lost a game on the road all year. It was a disaster without uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Breaking news. Um, two bits of news on the Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette's going to miss a game or two. Just reported, mm -hmm. and uh, they say that the hamstring injury for Mike Evans is not serious. And so, whether they hold him out next week or not, I mean, you could have. Next week, you could have Antonio Brown and Mike Evans out there with Gronk and, and uh, a chip on the shoulder of old Bruce Arians and, and Tom Brady. And, and, our, and our guy, Mike Evans, he's got to get to 1,000. Got to keep that streak alive. That's all he ever does. Uh, Dak, uh, he did not do anything. Right. 28 for 37. This is what we were just talking about. The Cowboys were so boring on offense because their defense is good and uh, the Giants are bad. They didn't need anything. Unfortunately, when they got around the goal line, it was Zeke's touchdown. And that, I mean, fortunate for 
Zeke managers, unfortunate for Dak managers. If you had Alvin Kamara, you hope you played Najee Harris or Joe Mixon or Cordero Patterson or Ramondre Stevenson or Clyde edwards alaire or James Conner because then you're all right. Played against them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, not with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you might have done that too. Uh, Kamara was in incredible because this was 11 for 18, six targets, two for 13, and they won the game. And they shut them out. And so you would have thought, Maybe something more than this on a game script that was conducive. What a weird game. And um, Ingram did nothing. Najee Harris was 12 for 18 on the ground, five targets, two for eight. It was ugly. Worst game for both Harris and Deontay Johnson on offense. And uh, Joe Mixon ended up 17 for 58. This game was all punts for almost the entire first half. And Cordero Patterson scored a touchdown that the NFL chose not to allow. That was uh, – I don't – understand it. They was called a touchdown on the field. I, I never, I still never saw any angle that looked like he didn't score a touchdown. It it looked pretty conclusive that he did, but for some reason they took it away, which changed a lot of that game because they then went uh, 0 for 4 on the tries at the goal line and turned the ball over. Um, Three times they I, were inside the five that they turned the ball over on downs. Yeah. Hmm. Ramondre Stevenson, one of the most disappointing performances of the week yes yes definitely. Heading, heading into the game against indianapolis the new england patriots were averaging 33 rushing attempts per game damian harris was uh ruled out of this game ramondre saw 10 carries the game script the punt it just it the entire game turned upside down and uh as a result it was it was a disaster for ramondre yeah bolden was in the lineup quickly and often because he plays the, third downs. Yeah, he's the third down. He's the two-minute drill type of guy where you had so much of this game where the Patriots were down immediately because of the, the early craziness. Not a game script that was easily predictable and, and bad for Ramondre. If, you know, if uh, it comes, you know, that, that Harris is out again, I'm still going to rely on Ramondre personally. Clyde edwards Zeller was just 9 for 32. James Conner just 8 for 39. Didn't get into the end zone. Chase Edmonds was... 8.8 a carry. They only gave him six of them. They gave him six carries in the game. It was six for 53, but, you know, again, you thought this game script would be rush, rush, rush against Detroit because you were winning. They got smashed. Melvin Gordon was 15 for 53. Javante, 15 for 72. So exactly 15 carries each. It's almost like it, that's the number one goal of the week is to make sure that that hits. Devonta Freeman was back in a timeshare with Latavius Murray. As a result, 6 for 22, another horrible performance. At the wide receiver position, Jamar... Well, you know, you got to talk about Michael Carter real quick. The He returned. We were... Uh, the You know, the, the rumors... Or like the, Not the rumors. I think the actual talk out of New York was Carter will come back. He will be his uh, the primary ball carrier, the primary running back. Uh, he saw eight carries. So did Tevin Coleman. Although, to be fair to Coleman, he, had eight, he was eight for 50. But once again, Zach Wilson uh, is the quarterback, and Michael Carter saw two targets. He caught one of them for two yards, and Michael Carter just goes to – he's he is that Wolverine meme holding the picture frame of Mike White, dreaming of those, those good old days in the middle of the season when he actually saw targets and his quarterback used his specialty. Well, and the good old days didn't have Tevin Coleman either. And Tevin Coleman was in there. I think he scored uh, in this game, and – Oh, no, wait, Zach Wilson ended up sneaking it, but Coleman got the goal line work. Miles Gaskin was 10 for 54 on 37% of snaps. He was the backup. Yeah, yeah. And, and you don't know whether that was due to just not practicing and being on the COVID list. Duke Johnson is already on the active roster now. He was playing that game of he's a practice squad guy, move him up, that that situation. Uh, I, I read this morning that he's – He's signed to the team now, so it, well. Good luck against New Orleans. Yeah, no, I, I I'm Duke. not. I'm not saying that the the matchup is fantastic, but Gaskin has been fine for fantasy purposes, getting all the volume. But but to me, as a football analyst, Miles Gaskin has been bad. Jamar Chase and T Higgins combined for oh. three total receptions. Oh, yeah, uh, when you needed them most. They were not there. 
Yeah, it it, it wasn't a a very good game. Uh, Joe <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow had um, 157 total passing yards in that game, and the majority of them came on a one single play. play where Tyler Boyd was kind of left open, had one guy to beat, beat him. Um, how long was that? 56. Yeah, it was, yeah. So so. So basically, outside of that one play, Burrow threw for 100 yards. Amari Cooper, two for eight. CeeDee Lamb, six for 50. Gal, three for 32. Uh, we've talked a lot about that game already. Michael Pittman got kicked out of the game. He only had one catch for seven yards before that. It's been uh, only one double-digit game in the last five for Michael Pittman. I believe Carson Wentz completed five passes. Did you know this? Yeah. I, they won I, by like a million points. He completed five passes. Yeah. I think it will be a better day for uh, Pittman next week against Arizona. It's tough to count on that in the fantasy playoffs, I, though. I agree. Deontay Johnson, worst game of the year, 5 for 38. Don't go look at his route tree. <laughs> you know you have those ne next-gen stats? Yeah. It's not pretty. It's not? No, it's not. What were they doing? Man, it's just, just like two yards down the field, run across the middle. You know, do, just do the old Pittman route. Chase Claypool. Um, is that the wait? Wait, what? What? What is that number there? Is that a glitch? Uh, he had oh, he zero gained... catches, but he gained twelve receiving yards from a lateral. So ah, somehow Chase Claypool ah. was no catches, twelve <laughs> receiving yards. It's it's hard to do, but he's done it. This is this was the worst weekend in the seven years that we've done this show. <laughs> yeah. Can I just? No, it really yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. was the worst one that I've ever been a part of. Nine targets for Mike Williams. He stunk. Rashad Bateman stunk. Brandon Ayuk was a disaster. One for 36. Played every snap. Two targets. <laughs> Just yuck. Well, in the the end of the game, I mean, if San Francisco is up, and if they can just keep running the ball, that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. it, it, if, if they could come into a game and know that we could win the game running it 100% of the time, they would just do that. Jerry Judy had uh, zero receptions for zero yards. A full goose. Gronk had 11 targets, only caught two of them. Impressive. Dawson Knox was four for 38. That was a, a, a dud in the playoffs. Mike Gesicki, high expectations, low output, five for 43. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Well, the, the Monday night and Tuesday night football <laughs> games will not have a high bar to get into that top 10. No, yeah. I mean, Gesicki's here in the, in the poopers. He is the tight end 11 on the week right now. I hear Brooks over there just like kind of sighing because, and laughing. Because we don't know what to do. <laughs> Everybody's questionable. The performance we had, they were Hold all on. they were all bad. I've got some I've got some uh cliches I prepared for Oh yes, this is for, important stuff. Um <clears throat> It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Oh yes, yes. thank you. Okay. Um we didn't lose the game, we just ran out of time. Mm. That sounds like a Yogi Berra. Um, if you learn from a loss, you have not lost. Oh, yes. Take that one. <laughs> Take that one to heart. Mm. And um, <clears throat> there's always next year. Yes. Yes, there is. <laughs> Maybe. This is, the, is this the worst episode of the show <laughs> we've ever done? No. Nah. Combined with? I mean, it's probably. No. Got to be in the bottom 50. <laughs> <laughs> but the the reality but is we're with you. Th that we is, are with that you. is the message here. We're we're with you, Foot Clan. We we know we we go through these personal toils with you. When when the players suck, we <laughs> aren't just you know. Oh well, that's your problem. This is our problem. We are <laughs> we are in it together. This is yeah. Um, we <laughs> yeah. We're moving forward. We actually we're moving. Forward. I might win all my games. Yeah, that's the crazy part. I might go part. four and zero oh in the and, playoffs. And I think the Foot Clan are going to win the majority of their games too. But it doesn't feel good right now. Just root root for Dalvin Cook tonight, if you don't mind. Well, um, uh, oh wait, because you're against. Him. Yeah, so uh, one of us will be happy tomorrow, but both of us probably won't be. Yeah, it's uh, it was a special weekend for sure. And people always ask us every year, like, how many leagues are you in? And we are, for, for the last seven years, we've been so intentional about being in a handful, not a million, a handful that we really, really care about so that we feel the highest of highs and the lowest of lows with each and every one of you. 
our main two leagues that we've been in for one of them's about to go to f- year 15 mm-hmm. are there's no money i mean this is like pure pride the loser a lot in, of pride i mean just more pride than is appropriate the loser ends up drafting in a wet sweatshirt for the entire draft and um Look, we feel it, man. We feel it. And and to get it spread out across five different nights has been very interesting. So tonight you have the Bears and the Vikings. And uh, I believe Madison is on the COVID list, right? So Dalvin Cook and Dalvin Cook will be in the backfield for M- Minnesota tonight. David Montgomery is going to play. Darnell Mooney, maybe we get a good performance from him. We're looking to the bright side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Come on, Justin Jefferson. Come on, Nick Mullins. <laughs> oh, no. I wouldn't go that far. Hunter Renfro tonight. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank pristineauction.com for supporting this show. Devontae Adams signed jersey, $58 ends tonight. Debo, a signed football, $26.25. That ends tonight as well. Go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. We will talk to oh. you tomorrow. And that will be a good old time. Enjoy the games tonight, and then just get a really good sleep. And we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.